so-called action zone is Seppi Golzari Munro. She's the director of, of the environmental think tank, the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit. Uh, welcome to you. Now, the big picture is they came here saying we want to work to limit the net increase in the global temperature to one and a half degrees centigrade. On the basis of what we've seen in these documents, where they are, what is the impact uh, going to be? Well, of course, we haven't seen the final text yet. However, it's very interesting that overnight into the second draft, we've seen this point around nations coming back within one year to increase their ambition to reduce their emissions still in the text. Now, that's critical. We've always noted that a success criterion for Glasgow is whether it does bring countries back sooner than the five years asked for in the Paris Agreement. Now, if this survives the night, this could very well do that. So that gives you some optimism then? Absolutely. I think there's, there's, it's a mi mixed bag, as you said. You know, we've just heard from the lady at the press conference that, you know, the, the language on fossil fuels has been watered down. Well, it's been watered down from the draft. But from the I draft. Because I understand it's not been in COP previously. In... It's never survived. And if it do does survive, even with its watered down uh, nature, it could still be a first. But as she mentioned, this, these words have been used for 12 years in the G20 and they haven't done much but however we have seen a real rebalancing between the first draft of the text and the second draft of the text this second draft has actually dissipated some of the anger that was emerging after the first draft the first draft was seen as much more focused on emissions reductions with really nothing on adaptation or finance or loss and damage very little now this does improve that package but many say not enough now it, it, just what are the mechanics of this? Because it's quite clear from the plenary session that there isn't agreement. Mm. Uh, does that mean, what, there's no declaration at the end? Or uh, do, do they have to agree everything? Or do they have a vote on it? I mean, what happens? Well, it has to be by consensus. And uh, the reality is, is that what we hear in the plenary session doesn't always reflect what's going on in the close, behind closed doors in the plenary rooms. And so actually, you know, there may be some warm words, there may be some fighting language, but in the rooms there could be much more give and take. Now, people are expecting this to certainly go in beyond 6 p.m. tonight, um, hopefully not too far into tomorrow, but critical issues do remain open around the loopholes and around financing, so we just have to wait and see. We'll have more from you uh, later on, but let's bring in our climate change correspondent, uh, Hannah Thompson.